Hey folks, David Stewart here. Let's talk a little bit about uh, The Wheel of Time, not the book series, but the Amazon TV series. I've read the book series and I'll talk about that. Uh, I do want to do a more full analysis of the first episode because they do do some things correct with the production. This video is really a complaint, a very specific complaint, but it has to do with storytelling, so I wanted to make it its own video. Before I get into that, uh, the newest book is called The Wasting Desert. It's 99 cents over on Amazon. Little two-hour fantasy horror short read featuring some characters from some of my other books as they journey across a rather supernatural and dangerous desert and end up being pursued by some interesting creatures, let's say. So, Here's the problem with the Wheel of Time. I can actually sum it up just by showing you an image, which is a picture of the cast. Or we can look at, say, this picture of the cast. Now, the problem is not that the cast is racially diverse. The problem is where they have placed that racial diversity in the context of the story. And it's a great example of how forced diversity always comes at the expense of the story. So what you see here is a cast and of these people one two three four five are all supposed to be from the same backwater town isolated in the mountains that's the two rivers so the two rivers is like this isolated mountain community not a lot of people come in not a lot of people come out it has old stock and it's the most racially diverse tiny village that I've ever seen, more racially diverse than anything I've seen in real life. Um, in fact, it's more diverse than what you see on this uh, little image here. Rather, you have people that are full sub-Saharan African next to people who are white Europeans, next to people who are maybe mixed race, next to people who are Indians. So you have every person seems to be from some other place in the modern world and they're living in a tiny isolated village. This completely breaks um, that immersion and it completely breaks or, or uh, prevents the suspension of disbelief if you want to think about it that way. It, it's not believable. It's something that makes you go, what? Why are there all these different looking people in the two rivers, especially if you've read the books before? Now, if you've read the books before, you get the idea that Rand, um, Randall Thor, looks a little bit different from the people in the two rivers who are, say, have brown or dark hair and dark eyes like I do. I am not, you know, I'm European, right? I'm of European descent and I have dark hair and not completely dark eyes, but, you know, darker eyes maybe than my wife whose eyes are just the most beautiful crystalline gray blue. But I digress. The point is, is that they put all of these different races in a tiny little isolated community. Isolated communities, especially before the modern period where people were able to just move into the first world in different places and you can have an urban environment in you know, a modern American city where there's lots of people from lots of different places and of lots of different ethnic backgrounds. Before that situation, you really have ethnic homogeneity in most small um small isolated towns unless there's some other reason for them to not be ethnically homogenous like if you have some sort of separation of caste like uh, you know like say the south before the civil war where maybe uh, all blacks happen to be slaves and like second class citizens and don't really mix that much with uh, the whites that are there but that's a very specific explanation and that doesn't even last that long there's no, there's nothing like that in the two rivers. It's just a town in the mountains. Everybody is there. Their ancestors are from there. Their ancestors were from there. They lived there for a thousand years. They come from old stock from this previous, uh, you know, from this previous nation that fell, uh, you know, many, many, many years before. So they really should be ethnically homogenous, just like how you get pretty much everywhere before the modern period. If you were to go from Rome over the Alps, you would see Germans that don't look like Romans, and you would see Gauls that don't look like Romans. And if you journeyed across the, the ocean to Egypt, people would look different than the Romans, right? Everybody had a different ethnicity because of where they were. Wherever you are, your ethnicity arises from you you know, reproducing with people that are like you. Um, so that's really what you would expect, even if you were to, I don't want to I don't want to get too deep into the lore of the Wheel of Time or like give you any spoilers, but even if you had lots of different people from different ethnic backgrounds at the time of the breaking of the world and then they kind of survived and coalesced into communities, through the process of genetic mixing, 
their ethnicity would basically be the same after a few generations. Everybody would look the same. So really what you should have is rather than having like Indian Egwene and like mixed race Perrin and black Nynaeve, you'd have everybody would just look maybe Italian or something, right? Everybody would look more or less the same ethnicity except for Rand who looks a little bit different because you know his genetic stock is actually not from there. Uh, that's why you get races like the Aiel in Wheel of Time who have the red hair. They all look like Aiel. You get this idea that people look uh, different depending on what nation they're at. And indeed, you can have tons of racial diversity in a Wheel of Time adaptation, but rather it's going to be the way that racial diversity would actually happen in a pre-modern um, situation, which is that you go to different nations and people look different in that different nation, just like how you, if you go from Italy to Gaul, the Gauls look different than the Italians. Um, you'd have the same thing going from you know the two rivers up over to Tyr, or like you go up to Shinar and maybe they look different in Shinar. You can actually have a lot of ethnic diversity in Wheel of Time adaptation. The problem is putting everybody in one little village where they wouldn't reasonably have a large amount of ethnic diversity. It's like the two black families that live in the in the two rivers just going to breed with each other forever. They'd be like inbred and uh, you know have all kinds of defects if they refused to uh, <laughs> have at least some genetic mixing with each other if they started uh, ethnically diverse. So if you start ethnically diverse over time, you're just going to become ethnically homogenous. Uh, and really, that's what we should have seen in the in the two rivers. Uh, honestly, if if that was the case, Perrin is probably uh, the most accurate of what that would be. If you had a lot of people from a lot of different ethnic backgrounds, you'd end up with people with maybe dark hair and dark eyes, but you know, a range of, of moderate skin tones, maybe a variety of of different kinds of uh, uh, features. But it more or less everybody would look close to each other. They'd look similar to each other which would be the case in most like pre-modern uh, civilizations. So anyway, I wanted to make that complaint because it comes at the expense of storytelling, right? The forced diversity always comes at the expense of storytelling, and this is an example because it really takes you out of what would otherwise be maybe a compelling world. Now, this wouldn't be the case with something like the Aes Sedai, where, people, where the Aes Sedai are pulled from all these different nations. So yeah, they would be ethnically diverse, but not the two rivers. The two rivers would be ethnically homogenous, and Rand would look slightly different than them, not so different that they would be like, Rand is not one of us because he looks, he has red hair and these like light eyes and light skin. Rather, he just looks a little bit different from us, not that different from us that people are viewing Rand as some kind of strange outsider um, the entire time. So anyway, I wanted to make that little complaint. You let me know what you think down below in the comment section um, about this, whether it's just something you accept as part of modern production. You know, it's a modern production. They probably have to, have to fill out uh, all the little check marks. They have to have a racially diverse cast in order to get it off the ground. It's going to be a demand from uh, the higher ups, or it could be that the creators of the show uh, maybe live in, a mo in an urban modernist bubble where they think racial diversity is the norm. And it, indeed, it could be in a first world situation, like if you're living in San Francisco or Los Angeles, to have a lot of uh, ethnic diversity around you. But that's really not typical for anything pre-modern. And in fact, when people moved, they didn't move like one family moves in. That didn't really happen pre-modern. In pre-modern, you had the entire tribe would move. All of the Kimiri came down from Jutland and got all of them got killed by the Romans. The entire ethnicity. Or, you know, all of the Normans came and moved down from Denmark and ended up in Normandy and France. They all migrated to Normandy. Uh, it wasn't like, oh, a couple Norman families came down and lived in France and integrated into France. If they did that, their, they would have, their identity would have just disappeared and been subsumed by the larger genetic, uh, you know, Gaulish ancestry kind of people that live in France or um, really, I guess, Frankish at that point uh, because we're talking about the Normans. Uh, and even when the Normans conquered England, there was like a thin Norman veneer on top of ethnically English people. If you went to an ethnically, if you went to a English village, you were going to see people who were ethnically similar to each other, <laughs> Anglo-Saxons, or you were going to see uh, maybe Celts. If you were out in the Celtic fringe, like in Wales somewhere, you'd see people who basically looked like each other. So because this is really a pre-modern setting, uh, even though, you know, I don't want to, again, I don't want to give any spoilers, but because it's really a pre-modern setting, this kind of diversity in an isolated village is really pretty far out and to me definitely made me stop and go what what are they doing there so anyway leave me your thoughts down below and um i'll talk to you guys next time have a great one